Please see the link in the description to download a worksheet for this video. Experiments can be dangerous. If you are a child, never do experiments unless your parent, guardian, or adult educator says it's all right and is there with you the whole time. If you've not already done so, we suggest that you watch the video on light transmission before watching this video. When water is calm, we can see reflected images in the water. In addition to being a source of beauty and relaxation, the science that causes reflected images on the water's surface is the same science that allows us to send messages in fiber optic cables along the ocean's floor. In this video, we'll learn about light reflections, including specular versus diffuse reflections, common mirror types, the law of reflection, how to draw light rays that show us objects and virtual images of objects, how to solve some plain mirror test questions, and total internal reflection. We'll start by comparing reflection types. There are two types of reflections, specular and diffuse. If an object is like a mirror and can create the image of another object, then we see a specular reflection. Specular reflections are common on objects that are polished or smooth. They're commonly made of metal, glass, tiles, and calm water. In contrast, if an object can't create a clear image of another object, we see a diffuse reflection of sunlight or other light sources from that object. Diffuse reflections are common on objects that are not polished and have a rough surface. Next, we'll introduce common mirror types. There are three common mirror types, concave, convex, and plane mirrors. Concave mirrors are shaped like the inside a part of a ball. Convex mirrors are shaped like the outside a part of a ball. The most common mirror type is a plane mirror. It's named after the flat surface in geometry called a plane. When we see something's reflection in a plane mirror, we call that a virtual image. Next, we'll introduce the law of reflection. Scientists use the word law to refer to observations about nature which to the best of our knowledge are true under all situations. This law applies to specular and diffuse reflections that are made using any light source, but it's easiest to demonstrate with a mirror and a laser. To make the laser's beam easier to see, we'll put the mirror in this container, fill it with orange soap, and keep the studio lights off. When the laser's light reaches the mirror while the laser is at this angle, what direction do you think the reflected light will go? To solve this problem, we'll use the law of reflection, which has three parts. Part 1 says that the reflected ray is on the other side of the normal than the incident ray. The incident ray is the name of the light beam coming from the light source. It hits the incidence point, which is on the reflective plane. The reflected ray is the ray of light that leaves the incidence point. In this case, the reflected ray is one of the white arrows shown here. The normal is an imaginary line defined as being perpendicular to the reflected plane and going through the point of incidence. According to part one of the law of reflection, the incident ray and reflected ray must be on opposite sides of the normal. Choice C is on the same side of the normal as the incident ray, rather than being on the opposite side of the normal. So choice C is a wrong reflected ray choice, and we can eliminate it. Part two of the law of reflection states that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. We measure the angle of incidence as being between the normal and the incident ray. In this case, it's 20 degrees. Then we draw in the angle of reflection, which is from the normal to the reflected ray. Its value must equal the angle of incidence according to the law of reflection. That means choice B is correct. The last part of the law of reflection states that the incident ray and the reflected ray are on the same plane, and that plane is perpendicular to the reflected plane. We'll illustrate this third part of the law by using this table and mirror. Here the green laser incident ray and reflected rays are in a plane that's about where the tabletop is. And the tabletop's plane is perpendicular to the mirror. When we look at these rays from the front, we can see that the incident and reflected ray are in the same plane. When a laser is directed at a reflective plane that's horizontal, an incident ray and reflected ray look like a perfectly symmetric, upright letter V. The width of that letter V gets narrower if the incident ray has a small angle, and the width of that letter V gets wider if the incident ray has a large angle. We will see this V shape in different orientations, based on how the reflective plane is orientated. Next, we'll introduce how to draw light rays that show us objects and virtual images of objects. 
There are three scenarios for how light rays travel from a light source to our eyes. When we view a light source directly, when we view an object directly, and when we view the virtual image of an object. When we see a light source, each ray comes directly from a light source into our eyes. When we view a diffuse reflection, we're seeing a light path that has two rays. The first ray is from the light source to the object, and the second ray is from that object into our eyes. When we're seeing a virtual image, which in turn is due to a specular reflection, then we're seeing a light path that has three rays. The first ray is from the light source to the diffuse reflective object. The second ray is from the diffuse reflective object to the specular reflective object. And the third ray is from the specular reflective object to our eyes. Most animals and plants may seem to be curved, so we might conclude they have no reflective planes, but just like this ball is made of many plane mirrors, all surfaces are made of reflective planes, though some may be much smaller than a square millimeter. If those reflective planes are all aligned, then that object will make a specular reflection. But if those reflective planes are not aligned, then that object will make a diffuse reflection. Next, we'll show how to solve three plane mirror test questions. Where is the virtual image for this object? A typical test question shows a mirror from the top, so we only see a thin line. To solve these questions, we use two rules. First, an object's virtual image lies along a line that is perpendicular to the reflective plane. Second, the distance from the object to the mirror is equal to the distance from the mirror to the virtual image. Choice A is correct. We can confirm this by looking at the virtual image in the mirror. We can ignore the camera because its location has no bearing on the location of the object's virtual image. These two rules may seem familiar if you think of a reflective plane as being calm water. In this view, the edge of the reflective plane is here. This rock's virtual image is along this line that's perpendicular to the edge of this reflective plane. Since the rock is a medium distance above the edge, its virtual image is a medium distance below the edge. Likewise, this rock's virtual image is along this line that's perpendicular to the edge of this reflective plane. Since the rock is a large distance above the edge, its virtual image is a large distance below the edge. Can a camera see this object's virtual image when there's a hand towel covering some of the mirror? We use dotted lines for all objects and light rays that are behind the mirror since they don't exist. This is the location of the virtual image. Then we draw a straight line from the virtual image to the camera. Because this line goes through part of the towel, that means the camera can't see the virtual image. Here's a perspective from the camera. But if we move the object farther from a wall, then the camera can see the virtual image. The reason is because when the object is in this new location, then the line from the virtual image to the camera is without any obstructions. This is the last practice test question. Where's the incidence point on this water that reflects the virtual image of this tree's top to this observer? To solve this, we first need to draw the place where the virtual image of this tree's top is. We do that by drawing a line that is perpendicular to the reflective plane and then selecting a location on that line that's an equal distance from the reflective plane, but in an opposite direction from that reflective plane. Next, we draw a line from the virtual image to the observer. That line crosses the reflective plane at the incidence point, so point B is correct. To complete the light's path, we can add a ray from the top of the tree to the incidence point. As the law of reflection requires, the incident ray and reflective ray at the incidence point form a shape like a symmetric letter V. Our last topic is total internal reflection. Although we commonly see reflected images on the top surface of water, they're also on the bottom surface of water. When the laser's light hits the bottom surface of this liquid at a large incidence angle, the light reflects back into the liquid rather than leaving the liquid. This is called total internal reflection. When we shine a laser through the small opening in this bottle, the light beam stays inside the flowing liquid even as the shape of the stream changes. It may seem that light is curving, but it's not. The light continues to go in straight lines between its points of reflection inside the water. Total internal reflection is how fiber optic cables can carry data that has been translated into intermittent flashes of light. The light stays inside the cable walls until reaching the end of the fiber optic cable. 
where it then connects with other electronic equipment. Here's a summary of this topic and some extra information. Please pause the video if you wish to read this. Thanks for your attention.